And good to see you tonight. Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord. I appreciate all of you that are here. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, we're going to ask you to go ahead and take a visitor's uh, packet, visitor's card, and, and fill that out. You can leave that in your pew. Anybody visiting with us for the first time, just slip up your hand, second time. Or if you've visited with us a couple times and never filled out a visitor's card, you want to slip up your hand and we'll make sure that you, you get a visitor's packet. Okay, anybody? Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. We have a couple of visitors, and I know they visited with us before, but we're glad you're back. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the service. Brother Steve's going to come and lead us in the congregation. Y'all all stand. Aren't you glad that Jesus still saves? The same God, the same Jesus saved 100 years ago, the same God, same Jesus saving now. Amen. That's, we're going to be on page 438. Jesus saves. Let's sing the first and the last verse. Jesus saves. Let's sing it out tonight. somebody have a time of fellowship tonight.
before we get into the first special tonight, I want to give you just a couple of things. Uh, one, remind all the folks that are graduating, uh, be sure to sign up at the Welcome Center. That way we can recognize you uh, June the 13th in our morning worship service. So be sure it's college or high school, either one. Make sure you sign up for that, okay? And then uh, if you've uh, not taken a yellow sheet of paper for directory uh, registration, we want you to do that tonight if you would. Uh, they're in the back, and Miss Donna was passing some out. Um, they look like this, okay? They look like this right here. And um, so anybody here, has anybody here not gotten one of these yet? Raise your hand if you have not. Okay, so um, is Hank in the back or somebody in the back that can get some and go ahead and let's go ahead and get these. Ralph, you want to go ahead and do that? Can you hold your hand up just for a minute and let uh, just keep them up while I make these other couple announcements as they come by? We want to make sure everybody gets these. And there's some in the balcony, too, if somebody can take some up there. We want you to go ahead and fill these out while you're here. And before you leave tonight, put them in the, in the church ministry box back there. You can just fold them like that. Just stick them in the church ministry box. And that way, my secretary can go ahead and get you registered, all the information that we need. And then the company will be contacting you to set up the appointment, okay? And uh, so you don't have to worry about trying to sign anything up, sign up on a chart or anything like that. Raise your hands high. Brother Ralph's going to hand these out. And um, uh, if you're in the balcony, Brother, Brother, Lu Brother Lewis, Brother Lewis, Brother Johnny, Brother Jeff, one of y'all want to come down and get some and hand them out in the balcony there? I don't think they can hear me good in the balcony, but... Um, they're getting old? Is that what it is? Okay. All right. Brother Jeff will be handing some out in the balcony. Raise your hand if you don't have these in the balcony. If you don't have any, Brother Jeff will bring you some up, okay? If you would, don't take them home. Go ahead and fill them out now and uh, leave them before you leave the service tonight. While you're doing that, let me just go ahead and do this. Um, <clears throat> the senior stars, we will be having Bible study this Tuesday, and we'll put a phone tree message out about that. And uh, we will be having Bible study this Tuesday. Lunch will be provided. Uh, so don't forget about that, okay? I want to give you some special, some names to pray for. Everybody kind of look up this way just for a minute. Um, on, our, on our screen behind us, every service we have names of people that are on our prayer list. And uh, we want to just continue to remember those. But... In our services, we'll have some names that have been given since that prayer list was updated. So listen up close on this and let me give you these names. Heather Locklear uh, has been, is battling cancer, so we ask you to pray for her. Just found out a couple weeks ago. Uh, remember Daryl Wisnett, who is sick, ate a bird. They called the family in on her, so be praying for this family. And remember the little boy, Tony Pringle. I got a, a call from Deborah McCrary during, between services. And Deborah said that he woke up, and uh, so they're praising the Lord for that. And she is so excited. She said, "Preacher," she said, "He's woke up in intensive care, of course, and said that he acts like nothing has happened." And so she says, "You know, Deborah said this is just nothing short of a miracle from God, and I believe it's cause of God's people praying." Amen. And uh, so we praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray for this little two-year-old child, Tony Pringle. And uh, as they try to, uh, to assess what's going on and any kind of damage there, and pray for the Paula, the Paula uh, Jolly family. Remember Margaret Ray, she's got surgery coming up this week, uh, some back surgery. Remember Caitlin Dula, who has surgery also, some back surgery coming up. So remember, and I think that's Wednesday, correct? And so remember her. Continue to pray for Paula Bowman, uh, recovering from her fall. Um, also, remember Sheila Tucker in your prayers. Remember uh, Deborah Motley. I just got a call just before the service. Brother Mike is taking her or having her taken to ER at Catawba. And so pray for them. And he's going to try to get her transported back to Winston to try to get some help. Okay, so be praying for them. Also, remember Jonathan Wells as you pray. Uh, remember Nettie Berry. I wanted to mention a name this morning. I had to get some more information, Annette Taylor. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Annette uh, stood up here and joined the church, and it's been a few weeks now, and um, she joined our church, sits back there about two-thirds of the way back. 
um, and she had a, an accident with a horse the other day, fell off, and uh, I don't, I, the details are not clear on that, but I am in communication with her. Uh, broke her leg, broke her clavicle, broke her shoulder blade, and so she's in a lot of pain and dealing with this, so I ask you to pray for Annette Taylor. And the reason I want to specify who she is, because most of y'all probably don't know her, she's so new, but she just joined the church a couple weeks ago. And uh, so be praying for Annette and pray that God would give her a quick recovery. And uh, she's probably watching by live feed, so just know that we're praying for her. Uh, continue also to pray for Donna Shook. I talked to her today as she's recovering from surgery, so just continue to remember her, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I, there's many, many others, and they're on the list behind us before and after service. And uh, you can go back and look at our live feed uh, recordings, and you can see the list there too, as I encourage you to pray for all of our folks, okay? Let's pray and ask God to help us in the service tonight and do what needs to be done in our hearts and lives. And pray that God will just give us good liberty. I appreciate the good service this morning, don't you? And the good liberty and uh, God just moving on hearts. And, you know, I always want everybody to feel welcome and feel with the freedom and liberty to get in this altar anytime they need to. You know, there are churches that don't have an open altar invitation. I just can't imagine that. Can you? I mean, Jesus is continually saying, come unto me. Yeah, amen. Come. And yet, it's, it's hard to imagine a church that would shut down their altar and, and never give an invitation and never open an altar. These, this altar is always open. Say amen right there. And so I appreciate God moving like he did this morning. Somebody told me before church, if, 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 they, uh, if, they didn't, if they didn't enjoy this, they something bad wrong. Amen. And uh, somebody said, if, they're, if this don't light your fire, your wood's wet. Amen. So uh, uh, I appreciate what God's done. And, Let's look forward to seeing what God's going to do in our service tonight, okay? All right, let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you, and I want to thank you personally and publicly, God, for what you've done for us today, and God, how you blessed and how you moved in song, and I just pray that you'll go before us tonight and touch us and give us in our spirit what we need and what you know that we need, and uh, Lord, I pray that you'll just go before us now and uh, give good liberty in this service. I pray that you'll speak to hearts and do what needs to be done in everyone, we ask you to be with these that we've mentioned by name, and I pray for those that are hurting, those that are recovering, and I pray that you'll just be with everyone. Give them special healing for their body. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, pray for Liz as she sings.
every problem that you face, I'm still the answer. In every moment you'll find grace. So no matter what you're going through or the burdens that you bear, He's still the answer. And the answer's always there. For the Hebrew boys, I was the fourth man. But forever still the same He's still the answer For every problem that you face He's still the answer In every moment you'll find grace So no matter what you're going through Or the birth protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity, and we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while you hear each spoken need, yet love is way too to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise Blessings come through raindrops. What 
Appreciate that song, don't you? A lot of truth to that song, a lot of truth to it. And um, so, <clears throat> thank you, Samantha, for singing that. Liz, thank you for the special tonight. I want to go ahead and get back into our study that we started the other night. And uh, go ahead, if you would, take your Bibles, turn over to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 30. Proverbs chapter 30. We'll look at this together. And uh, thank you so much for being back out on this Sunday night, and uh, pray that God will just take the service and use it as a blessing for you. And um, Proverbs chapter 30, we're going to look at a couple verses here. Keep your Bibles open because we're going to be looking at a few other verses too, and uh, as we get into the study tonight. And um, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25, we'll start off there. Well, let's start off with verse number 24 first, and we'll work our way down. Proverbs chapter 30, verse number four, 24. The Bible says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. There be four things that are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. We talked about this the other night, and we mentioned... The ants in detail, we, we talked about that, and I'm not going to go back over all that tonight. The next verse says, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. They're not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. We talked about the ants and how that they are a colony and how that they work together, and we talked about how they demonstrate unity and in the house of God. And uh, I hope that that message was an encouragement to you and a help to you. But tonight, the Bible says in verse 26, it goes to the next one. It says, first it talks about the ant, then it says, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. Then it goes on, talks about the locusts, have no king, yet they go forth they, they go forth, all of them by bands. And then the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. <laughs> Nobody likes spiders, I don't think. Let me just ask you, does anybody in here like spiders? Anybody? Just raise your hand. Doesn't look like we have any sickos here tonight, but... Uh... <laughs> My daughters, my granddaughters today, they hollered. Uh, you could tell something was up upstairs in their room up there. And, and you could just tell by the sound they made and by the statement they made. 
And I can't remember what they said now, but it was something that we all downstairs knew something was wrong. And then they said, Pop, Pop, we need you. And I took off up there, and in one of their little boxes was a little spider, just no bigger than a quarter inch, very, very small. And I said, well, it's just a little spider. And I went to pick it up, and they both screamed. And, and uh, I said, it's just a jumping spider. And I said, we'll take it and let it go. And uh, it taketh hold. The Bible said, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. Uh, the spider is everywhere. I don't care how much you can try to keep them out, they're everywhere. And um, there be three things in verse number 29 which, uh, which uh, go well, yea, for, or comely and going. And we'll talk about those at another time. Let's look at the Comeys tonight. Verse number 26. The Comeys are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. I wanted to give Brother Kyle a picture tonight to put up on the screen, and I didn't... I didn't get the picture that I was looking for and um, I started to bring one of my rabbits. We, we raise rabbits, and I started to bring one of them that's probably the closest thing to a hayrax, what, or what they call hayrax or rock rabbit, and, uh, but I didn't bring it tonight. But I will tell you this about the conies. The Bible says they're a feeble folk. It's pretty interesting because when you, <clears throat> when you start looking into the definition of these four things that the Word of God is talking about, they're small. And it's very, very, it's very purposed in its wording to say that they are small. And um, it's, in fact, it's at the very, very first part in verse 24, it says, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they're exceeding wise. And so what we need to take from this tonight, whether it be the ants, whether it be the conies, whether it be a spider or the locust, we need to understand that <clears throat> it don't matter your size, it just matters if you are diligent and being what God wants you to be. And these, these creatures, <clears throat> I don't even want to say animals, the coney's an animal, but ants, you know, we don't really consider them animals. We consider them insects and, and, and same thing with the spider and the locust. But the coney's, if I had to describe what a coney looks like over there in the Israel and part of, parts of Israel and Palestine and area over there, they live in the rocky areas because they have no way of defending themselves. And we're going to get detailed in the information here in a few minutes, and you can take some notes. <clears throat> there's, there's one. Thank you, Kyle. Um, and they have, to kind of give you some detail on the conies, it's kind of a cross between a guinea pig and a rabbit. And um, <clears throat> some of these, they refer to them as the hider. H-I-D-E-R, the hider. If you're taking notes, jot this down. They refer to a coney as the hider. Please don't let your mind wander tonight because there's some truths I'm going to give you in the coney in Proverbs chapter 20, uh, 30, verse number 26. I'm going to give you tonight in the, in the little creature, the coney, that's going to help you in your Christian life. They refer to the coney as the hider capital H-I-D-E-R, because they hide themselves in the rocks. Their only defense, they have no way of defending themselves. They have no way to fight off any kind of predators. Their only defense is to hide in the rocks, just like the child of God. Listen, we need to find ourselves hiding in the rock of ages. Cliff for me. We need to find ourselves hiding in Him. And I promise you, you say, well, preacher, we are weak. And I'm going to go into that minute. The Bible says we are weak, but He is strong. And I want you to know, just like the little hider or just like the coney, our defense tonight should not be within ourselves because without Him, we are totally defenseless. But when trouble comes, when the adversary comes, when the predators begin to come toward us, we need to find ourselves hiding in the rock. Amen. So the high, the, there was a song that we've heard all of our life as a little boy, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. There's another song, Hide Me, O Rock of Ages. And uh, I'll, I'll look at that here in just a minute. But it's kind of a cross between a rabbit and a guinea pig as far as the look. And we're going to get into some details about the coney here in just a few minutes. Psalms chapter 104 verse 18 says, The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, 
and the rocks for the conies. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. And I want to say to you tonight that our refuge is in Jesus Christ, the great rock. And so I want to give you just a couple more details about the conies before we get into the message tonight. The Bible says they are a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. They are a colonist animal. What, what I mean by that is they stick together just like the ants. They, they habitat together. Uh, the Bible, the Bible and, and even society teaches that there is power in numbers. And the church, once again, needs to be a colonist group, an organism. We need to be a col We need to stick together, amen? Yes. And we need to hide when troubles come, when problems come, in the rock of ages. And so the Bible teaches the, uh, the uh, coney is about the size and about the color of a rabbit. Though they're clumsy in structure and with, they don't have a tail. They're, they're, they're clumsy. And I want to tell you this. I, we raise rabbits, and our rabbits, if you, I've got some that I've turned loose, and they'll dig, they'll dig, they'll constantly dig, and they'll dig holes, and they'll burrow themselves. They'll, they'll dig burrows, and they'll go back into the holes as they have dug out, and they'll build a nest back there, and they'll have their little ones in that hole, and their holes that they'll dig in the dirt, in this Burke County dirt, they'll dig holes this big around. They'll go down, and they'll have their babies in there. But the coney doesn't have the ability to do that. The coney doesn't have feet to be able to dig because they live in the rocks. But aren't you glad that God always, He always makes a way. He always prepares. And He prepared these conies with feet that are like suction cups. Their feet are like suction cups in that they, they attach themselves to the rock. Y'all getting this? Listen, we need to do the same thing. We need to be so attached to the rock. Amen? Yes. Uh, we need to have an attachment to Him when Amen. troubles come. And they have little feet like suction cups that gives them the ability to scurry and to run and, and hang out in the rocks. And as I was looking at pictures uh, to try to give Kyle a picture, uh, there's other pictures of these little guys, and they'll just be just laying all over the rocks everywhere. Just everywhere. They'll be all over the rocks everywhere. And, uh, and they scurry around. Uh, here's a picture here. And I don't know if you can see their feet right there, but they're, when their feet and they're running, it's like little suction cups. What are they doing? They're sticking close and they're sticking hard to the rock. We need to be doing the same thing and sticking close to our rock in Jesus. Now Moses, <clears throat> Moses did this, and I'll read you the scripture here about Moses a few minutes, but let me give you something else about the conies, they're a weak creature. They're very timid. I don't, the picture that he just put up there a few minutes ago, you can tell that they don't get far out from the rocks. Now, they'll lay out in the sun on the rocks, and they'll lay out there uh, and enjoy the heat of the sun, but they're always close to where they can scurry back into the safety and the cliffs and the crevices of the rocks. They're weak creatures. Let me just say this about a child of God. Without him, we are nothing. I mean, without our rock, we are weak. If those little conies get away from their, their fortress, if they get away from the rocks, they, are, they can fall prey to anything. And I want you to know tonight, if we get away from our rock, if we get away from Jesus Christ and we walk away from Him, we can fall prey to anything. And so we need to, no matter what we do when we eat, and they'll feed. And I said a while ago, it's amazing how God gives and how He prepares and how He's got everything planned out. And He allows that vegetation to grow up between the rocks, and they don't have to get away from the rocks, but He brings the food right to them Amen. in the growth between the crevices of the rocks. And God always does uh, th those kind of things that we need. He always takes care of all of our needs. But the rocks, they supply a fortress. They supply a place where they can feel guarded. And um, let me give you this also. Just like our own inabilities and weaknesses, our inabilities, our inabilities and weaknesses should drive us to Him, and it should drive us to a rock higher than we for shelter and support. Amen. And that's where we should make our habitation. This creature can do nothing to protect itself, to warn off danger, uh, and warn others of danger, nor provide food for itself, but it's totally, totally, totally dependent on the rocks. And I say tonight, that's exactly the way we are. Amen. 
And so let me just give you this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I say to you tonight, we are strong because of him. Exodus chapter 33 is a story I want to read to you, and you're very familiar with this, but you're welcome to turn over there. Exodus chapter 33, verse number 17 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Aren't you glad he knows us by name? And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness. In verse number 19, he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy to whom on whom I will show mercy. Verse 20, and he said, Thou canst not see my face, for, there's, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Y'all getting that? Hang on. There is a place by me. Now let me just stop just a minute and say I'm thankful tonight that there's a place by him. And everybody here that's been saved by the grace of God, we've got a place right by him. I mean, I can see God tonight. I can see him tonight saying, there's a place by me that you can get right here for safety. Amen. And this is what he told him. He said, there is a place by me. I might preach on that. Amen. There's a place by me. And this is what he said. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. In verse 22, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock. And will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Amen. Yeah. Preacher, how does God do that? How does God put you in the cliff of the rock and then hold his hand over you and then he'll pass by? <laughs> well, if you could explain God, then you wouldn't have anything. Amen. He's so big that he could speak the universe into existence. He's so big that he can create mankind out of a handful of dirt. Amen. And listen, this would be nothing for him to have a cliff and a rock to put you in it, to put Moses in it, cover him up with his hand, and then pass by so that he can see his back parts. Verse 23, it says, I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. You remember when Moses came off of the mountain? And he came back to the children of Israel, and the Bible said he was glowing with a glow about him that, that they, they were amazed because he had a glow on him. He had, he had been in the presence of Almighty God, and he'd been in the power of Almighty God. And anybody that gets in the presence of Almighty God to this day will have a glow about them. Amen? There's some of you that probably went out to lunch today, and people seen you, and probably seen a glow about you, and they're thinking, boy, there's something different about that person. I don't know what it is, but they had no idea you had just been with God. Amen? Deuteronomy 34, verse number, 32, verse number 4 says, He is the rock. His work is perfect for all of His ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity. Just right is He. Just and right is He. So we can hide in the rock. Psalm 143, verse number 9 says, Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. We can hide in the rock. If you're taking notes, write this down tonight. It's a very, very simple message. Just like the conies, we can hide in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And we can find a refuge there. And I, I don't know about you, but there's been many times in my life that I've had to crawl in the rock. Amen? I've had to scurry back to Jesus because of dangers and toils and snares. But I'm telling you, I've always found a resting place in Him. Amen. And I've always found a fortress in him. We can hide in the rock, but also we can hold fast because of the rock. Listen to me. <clears throat> we can hold fast because of the rock. Some, somebody said here while, some time back, years ago, they said, I just don't know if I can hang on to him. It gets rough in this life. It gets rough in this world. I just don't know if I can hang on. Well, good news. You don't have to hang on. He can hang on to you. Amen. Amen. Hey, when we get to where we can't hang on, he hangs on to us anyhow. Amen? But we can take shelter in the rock. We can find refuge in him. And I can give you verse after verse after verse in the Old Testament and the New Testament that talks about the refuge, that he is a refuge to us. I want to give you something right quickly here that uh, I, I wrote down and jotted down. 
This song says, O thou blessed rock of ages, trusting now, dear Lord, in thee. It says, Keep me till my journey's ended, till thy blessed face I see. Hide me, O blessed rock of ages, till thy blessed face I see. When the storms round me rages, rock of ages, hide thou me. I'm glad tonight that we've got a hiding place in him. <laughs> Amen. I used to, when I was a boy, I used to, we all, just like everybody else, we used to like to play hide and go seek. Some of these young, younger ones now probably have no idea what that is. But they don't have hide and go seek on this. Amen. Well, we used to go play, play hide and go seek. And uh, we enjoyed that because just of the game that it is. But this song says, when my journey is completed and there's no more work to do, Savior, guide my weary spirit, happy land beyond the blue. Hide me, O blessed rock of ages, till thy blessed face I see. When the storms around me rages, rock of ages, hide thou me. I like that, don't you? I'm glad that we've got a rock that we can hide in. So we can hold fast. We can hide in the rock. We can take shelter in the rock. We can find a refuge in him. Let me just say to you tonight, there's been many, many times in my life when my wife couldn't help me, my mom and dad couldn't help me. My preacher couldn't help me. My friends couldn't help me. But only I could find refuge in him. He's the rock that is always there. So we can take shelter in him. But we can find peace in the rock. Brother Kyle, put that picture back up there with all those conies under that rock. I want you to look at this just for a minute because this is a good one. In fact, I started to send this one to him. If you can pull that up. Uh, and I want you to notice how peaceful these guys are. Isn't that good right there? You know what they're saying? Hide me, O blessed rock of ages. Amen. It looks like they're pretty peaceful right there. Amen. It don't look like they're fretting. It don't look like they're all tore up. They found peace in the rocks, just like we can find peace in the rock of ages, a release from all the noises of life. And um, I, years, and we'll probably do this this year. We hadn't done it in a couple years, one because of the coronavirus and then uh, the year before that because of a couple other things. But every year we usually go up to Table Rock and we've taken some of you before. And If you've never been to the top of Table Rock in the fall, you need to go to Table Rock. And, and some people will say, well, I just can't do it. I just, I'm, you know, but it's a very easy hike. It's a very easy walk. And, and uh, you just gent you're just gently making a path back and forth up there. It's all, you just got to be careful, you know, to not stumble. But it's something to see. And when you get up there uh, years ago, I took uh, Elizabeth uh, when she was younger. We veered off the path a little bit, and we got down into a crevice, into a canyon, where very few people go. And uh, so <clears throat> I took her down there when she was a girl, and it was a rock that was probably as tall as this ceiling that was open way back into the side of the mountain. And they go back in there, people, you can see where people's gone in there and camped out. And you can see where they've had fires and stuff like that, little campfires in there. And when you go in there, just as soon as you, when you go in there and you go all the way to the back, back in there, you can't hear anything else out there. It cuts out all the noises of life out there. And I thought when I was back there the last time, I thought, this is what Jesus is right here. He's our rock and we can climb back in him and we can cut out all the noises of life. I mean, all the voices that come against us, all the threatening things, all the thunder, all the lightning, many, many people, and even the Indians probably two, three hundred years ago, probably found refuge back in the rock right there, just like we find refuge in Him. So we can find peace in the rock, a release from all the noises. But we can find provision also. It's amazing to me, and I don't understand how it happens, but let me give you another illustration here how God provides vegetation and stuff for these little animals. It's amazing, uh, you know, you say, well, preacher, nothing can grow in rocks. I beg to differ. There's a lot can grow in rocks. If you go to the Blue Ridge Mountains up here, you'll find that trees, huge trees are growing out of rocks. And it's just absolutely amazing. In fact, I know I've got the secret. How many of y'all plant, planted grass this past year over the years at your house or something like that? I've got the secret on growing the prettiest grass you can grow. You want me to tell you? Get you a good bed of gravel down first and sow the grass on that. And it'll come up, amen? You say, preacher, it won't. It'll come through asphalt. 
our guys have to get out here, Rob has to get out here and spray the asphalt to kill the grass that's coming up through the asphalt. I'm just simply telling you that just because there's rocks out there don't mean vegeta vegetation is going to grow. And I want you to know that it don't matter how bad the circumstances, it don't matter how bad the surroundings are, it don't matter how, how unhealthy, or, it doesn't matter how threatening everything is, you got to know tonight that when your rock is Jesus Christ, He's going to supply everything that you need. There's not going to be anything that you need that He's not going to have for you and that uh, He's not going to have available for you. And so <clears throat> we can find our provisions in the rocks. And uh, somebody said, well, where are they going to get their water from? From the rock. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that, rock, that water has come from a rock. Amen? Yeah. I read over in Corinthians where the rock followed the children of Israel through the wilderness. Yeah. The rock. A giant rock followed them through the wilderness and water gushed forth like a river out of that rock. And then the Word of God tells us in Corinthians that that rock was Jesus Christ. And He supplied water long before that, long before that time, and He'll supply water even after that, water and food. We can find provisions, but we can, find, we can also find protection. Our defense is in Him. You know, they go for a refuge in there, but also our defense is in Him. Um... How many of you realized that if it weren't for the Lord, you'd never make it? How many of you have been driving along and all of a sudden you get this feeling that you just look around and, they're, they're, and, and, and just in an instant you say, it's coincidence. No, it's not coincidence. It's divine providence. God, the rock has protected you one more time. And uh, I've been coming into an intersection before and get this feeling, you know, and I'll look and I'll ease up and all of a sudden, boom, I've got the green light and somebody runs a red light. And if I'd have went through, they would have hit me and probably killed me. But you know what happened? You know what took place right there? The rock protected me. Amen? I crawled into the protection of the rock. So we have protection in the rock, but also we have progressive growth in the rock. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, those little conies that we were looking at a while ago, uh, they're, they're not starving to death. They're not stumped in their growth. They're continually growing. They're progressively growing because of the rock. And it's because of Him that we can grow old and raise our children and our children's children in the same safety of the rock. There were some pictures earlier that I was looking at, and some of these conies were laying out there, and some of their little pups uh, were laying out beside of them. And I thought to myself, that's just like God's people. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we're in Him, and we found such, such safety and protection in Him. We found such refuge in Him that it's good and it's not just good enough for us, but it's good enough for our youngins. And it's good enough for our youngins, youngins. Amen. And I say to you tonight that the Rock of Ages is good enough for everybody. And everybody can find a shelter and everybody can find the help they need in Him. So we can raise our families. We find that progressive growth. We can praise God because of the Rock. Somebody say amen right there. We don't have to look very long to find a reason to rejoice in Him. And I want to remind you again tonight that the conies are just a feeble folk. They're just a feeble folk. They're just very small, and they're very little, but they're very wise. How, preacher? Because they find themselves in the safety of the rocks. And you would be wise tonight to continue to find your safety in the rock of ages. Amen? No wonder their songwriter came along and wrote that song, Rock of, rock of Ages, Clap for Me. Let me find my rest in thee. I want to give you just a couple of things tonight in conclusion. I want to compare the life of a coney to the majestic life of a lion because people would say a lion is strong and we need to be like a lion and we need to be able to defend ourselves. And somebody would say, we need to be like the lion at the top of the food chain. And No, but I want to tell you, we need to be like the coney. And I want to give you a description to comparing the life of a coney to the majestic life of a lion. The lion has to defend himself. Aren't you glad tonight that we don't have to defend ourselves? I mean, we're trusting in the line of the tribe of Judah. Somebody say amen right there. We don't have to defend ourselves. We're trusting in him. All we got to do is run to the rock, and that's what the conies do. They don't have to defend themselves. You know what these little conies do? They don't have to sit around and, and, sit around and, and, and ring in their little suction cup feet and hands and stuff and worry about tomorrow. No, they're just laying there enjoying the presence of the rocks. Amen? 
That's what we need to do. We don't need to worry about what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't need to worry about what next week is going to bring. We don't need to worry about what next month is going to bring. All we need to do is just trust in Him. The lion has to defend himself, but also the lion has to hunt for its prey. It has to hunt for its food. The coney does it. All they're doing is going out there every day receiving what God has brought to them. Rece <laughs> receiving what God has allowed to grow up through the crevices of those rocks. If you study this out, you'll find out that in those rocks and those rocky hills over there in Petra and the Israeli part and Palestinian areas over there, there's, a, there's several different or, or hundreds of different varieties of plants, but some of those plants literally, listen to me, some of those plants literally shoot up in a one-night span. In other words, when those conies go in there for their refuge in the nighttime hours and they're in there, they're relaxed, and they're just enjoying the protection of the rock, they're, they're, not, sitting there saying to their, they're not sitting there saying to their spouse, their Miss Coney, they're not saying, Miss Coney, I don't know how we're going to make it tomorrow. No, they're just in there enjoying the protection of the rock. And what do they do? They get up the very next morning as the sun begins to rise. And they come out of the cleft of that rock. And they begin to see vegetation that's come up in less than a 12-hour period. When they went to bed, there was nothing there. When they woke up, there's fresh vegetation there for them. I'm just simply saying to you tonight, we're the same way. When we lay our head down tonight, we ought not worry about what tomorrow's going to bring. We ought to just say to our rock, we're trusting in you. And when we get up in the morning, God's going to provide everything just like he has all along the way. Amen. Amen. You say, well, preacher, it, it, it can't happen that way. No, it can happen that way every single day of your life till Jesus comes. He's going to make sure that we have every need. The Bible says he's going to make sure that we have every need that we have need of. He's going to meet it. Amen? If he can raise that vegetation up. By the way, he does it here too. I mean, uh, it was, it's amazing to me. I've seen, um, this is the time of year where bamboo comes up. Have y'all seen some bamboo? Uh, you've come down the road here. This is the back way to the church from Roadhest Road. There, right over here across the bridge. The, have you seen it over there? I mean, in one day, I mean, you can see it'll be that high. We got bamboo growing at our house. And you can see it in the, coming out of the ground just like this. Jimmy, you got some over at your place. You'll see it like this. The next day, you'll come, and it'll be like this. Within a couple of days, it's this tall, and it's just growing like crazy. Well, if God can do that with bamboo, he can certainly do it with the plants for the little comies over there, little conies over there in Israel, but he can do the same thing in Europe. I've seen him take $5 and make 50 out of it. I've seen him take $10 and make 100 out of it in a very short period of time. And I'm telling you, he can do the same thing in your life. We don't need to fret about how we're going to survive. The lion has to defend itself. The lion has to hunt for its food. But we don't have to. The coney doesn't have to. And the lion has to provide safety for its young. I'm glad tonight. Listen, I'm glad tonight. And I just, I, 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 I'm just going to reiterate something that I've said over the past 24 hours. You know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm excited about going to heaven, but I'm not looking to get on the bus tonight. Somebody say amen right there. Now, if my family and all of us could go to heaven together, that's one thing. But everybody has this concern. You know, I, you know I've thought to myself over the years, uh, you know, I don't want to leave my wife behind. Amen. I don't want to leave my children behind. But you know what? If the day ever comes that I have to close my eyes in death, there's no, there's, I can rest assured that my wife's going to be taken care of. I can rest assured that the same God that's gotten us through all these years, maybe toils and trials and all that, is the same God that's going to continue to get her and the kid and the, the grandchildren, all of them, through. Somebody say amen right there. So he's, the lion has to provide safety for his young. The conies, all, rather, whether they're old or whether they're young, is dependent on the same protection, and that's the rocks. Tonight, I say the same thing. My hope is in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I'm trusting in the rock of ages. My wife's trusting in the rock. Amen? Our daughter and her husband trusting in the rock, and their little children are going to do the same thing. Conies run to the rock for all of this, and we should do the same thing. Amen? So let's look at this again. There are four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The coney, 
The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. And I would say to you tonight, you say, well, preacher, I feel awful weak. I feel awful feeble. I just don't know if I can do. I don't know if I can. Listen, you don't have to. All you need to do is trust in the rock. Amen? And he'll bring it all to pass. So I hope these feeble little words help you tonight. And uh, you'll take them and allow God to give you strength and allow God to give you some courage. Okay, Father, thank you so much for the truth of your word tonight. I pray that you'll help us, God, to allow your word to liberate us. Help us to allow your word to strengthen us. And I pray we'll be like those little conies. I pray that we'll find ourselves held fast to the rock. Lord, help us to find ourselves in him. Help us to find ourselves staying right with him, never wandering far away. God, I'm thankful tonight that Jesus is our rock. I pray that you'll help us in the days ahead just to live for him, to walk with him in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. God, bless, God bless you. Um, got one more picture? That looks like some folks I've seen before, amen. Looks like they're... Looks, <clears throat> Looks like they're praising the Lord. Amen. He's singing, Oh, bless thou rock of ages, is what he's singing. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.